Hey guys, this is Dustin with Gym Reinforcements and I recently gave a talk to a group of gym owners at a private workshop and I thought it'd be worth sharing it with everybody so I decided, heck, I'll put it on my YouTube channel and share it with you. So the topic was about belief breaking, okay? Uh, because it is often the biggest thing that creates momentum for a business to move forward. A lot of times if the owner has a belief it can hold the business back. If the team has a belief, uh, somebody usually has a belief that is stopping it from going forward. Because if you've talked to other people who've grown in the industry or in the business, um, then you know what to do. But a lot of times what's holding you back is just some sort of crazy belief. And so we got to get rid of that. So I pretty much started with this is that, uh, you know, not only is it one of the biggest things that holds a business back, uh, and that is beliefs is that it's also needing to be pretty much something the owner is always on the lookout for. And they have to look for opportunities to break beliefs, to coach a team member that you see has a belief that is holding your business back. And if you don't break it, it'll continue to hold it back. That, that takes awareness, but also the awareness of your own beliefs that are holding the business back. That takes far more awareness, okay? So you've probably overcome some if you can think about it that you're like, man, the old me used to think X or believe X and I've proven that to not be the case. And good thing that I worked through that belief. Otherwise, my business would have never grown. All right. What what's something that comes to mind? All right. Let's say you've hired a coach to run a session, but for the longest time you believed you would never be able to trust someone to do that and that no one would run a session as good as you. Well, that was a belief and then you work through it and now you are not running that session that the coach is owning because you got over that belief. Or what if you don't believe that you're good at sales, all right, which is obviously not going to serve you and your business. You need to work through that belief and so you need to work on overcoming it. And, you know, if that's something you do on your own or you hire a coach or you talk to a peer, but you have to work through that because it's not going to help you at all, right? Is these, these words that we say out loud, these sentences, these beliefs, they really will make your business suffer. And so you need to actively work on it just like any other problem in your business is beliefs, okay? So uh, this is the cycle that you see is that there's a limiting belief that the person holds that contributes to them having a lack of action because they're almost backing up their belief. And then that leads to poor results. And so it just is a self, uh, you know, fulfilling prophecy, a, a, a victim cycle that I just don't want to see a gym owner fall to. And again, the stemming issue is a limiting belief. So you got to work through it. And again, uh, it's something that is so vitally important that I see most of the businesses that grow. It's because they broke beliefs that held them back. All right. So uh, I heard this and I really liked it. So I want to share with you. Your life moves in the direction of the thoughts you're most familiar with. Okay. So basically, it's a way of saying the thoughts that you think about over and over and over again, your life will move in that direction. So you got to really audit. What are you thinking about over and over? And do they serve you or do they not serve you? And are they true and factual or are they not true? All right. And so I'm going to give you some examples um, to help you think about this, okay, and how you have to audit your thoughts and increase your awareness of your thoughts, your self-talk, and the way that you talk to others, because they all matter. And we've all heard about the growth versus the fixed mindset. And notice how the words are, or sentences are written, okay? I could try a different strategy. Is this really my best work, or can I do better, all right? This may take time and effort, okay? Thinking long time horizons. Then the fixed mindset is, I can't do this. I'm no good at it. I never will be. Uh, this is good enough. All right. I just got to get this done with and move on to the next thing. And this is too hard and diff difficult. I'll never, I'll never learn this. Okay. So, um, this shows up in clients. All right. So again, we're in fitness. So let's talk about that. What are some beliefs that you have to coach them through and break? Right. Number one, their schedule. I have too much on my plate, <laughs> which is kind of silly because they're gain too much weight from having too much on their plate. But, uh, the, the truth is that they think they're, too busy and that's why they'll never get fit and healthy. But you know, you have tons on your plate. You have to, so much that you do, but you make the time. You don't, you don't like use this as an excuse, but that's a belief they have is that their schedule. And then you put, say, Hey, I'm going to have you talk to this other person. Listen how busy they are and they still find the time and you start to expose them that this is a false belief, right? 
Um, is this uh, investing in your program? Is it an expense or an investment, right? Um, man, this is another bill. This is going to cost a lot. Geez, you know, like this is expensive. These are all things that they're cha- they have the wrong belief. But then they're like, man, this is an investment. I'm going to get this back in my health. Um, I'm going to get this back in longevity. I'm going to have more years. I will have better quality years. Man, what a great opportunity for me. I'm going to invest in my health, right? And I'm going to invest in healthy foods and supplements and a, and a coach. And so, you know, it's a belief you're going to have to coach them through and change their wiring, right? Because they're just saying that and believing that because of their past wiring, the people they've been around. Um, and then victim of circumstances. You know, I can't sign up for your gym because my culture loves carbs. And so I can't do your diet, which every culture is based off of carbs or my metabolism is slow. And so, you know, I, I'll never lose weight because I'm 40 and it's like, uh, Everybody can influence their metabolism to get better and to be optimized, right? Um, I'm big boned, which is silly because there's been no skeleton discovered, a human skeleton where they have three or five X thickness bones compared to your standard human, right? So it's like another false belief, not based in facts. And then I work the graveyard shift, okay? Um, Because I eat past 6 p.m., I will be overweight. So victim of my circumstances, because of my job, I'll never lose weight, right? So, you know, all of these, you can talk somebody and coach them through and break their beliefs. And that's great because that makes you valuable as a coach. It helps you sell. It helps people to change their mindset and the way they're thinking about things. But now we're going to change it to you, a gym owner. All right. And it's funny because it's the same list, but they're kind of just spun a different way. Okay. So schedule. I got too much on my plate between coaching and follow up with leads and hiring team members. Like I, I just can't you know, uh, grow my business. You know, I can't take on another thing. Okay. Expense versus investment. Oh man, I got to hire another coach. That's going to cost a lot. I got to put money out for marketing. I need to invest in equipment. Um, no, you know, like, uh, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. This is a massive expense. This is a big bell. Hmm. Sounds kind of familiar, right? And then victim of circumstances. Okay. The clients, they're never going to pay that amount for a, for a gym. They're never going to sign up for my service if I raise my prices. Um, you know, that's too high in this area. Um, my market is different. People don't want that here. My team uh, isn't getting it done. You know, like I just got, you know, uh, I'm, I'm the victim of a terrible team. All right. So these are all beliefs you have. But I challenge them because I would say, is there not any gym in town that has higher uh, fees than yours and they're successful that has found a way to coach up their team and make them awesome that spends money on marketing because they know they're going to get a return on that and they've figured out how to prioritize their day and to work on the biggest ticket items and make their schedule more effective like is there really nobody that you know or in your area that's done that and are you really a victim of your circumstance so the truth is those are beliefs that are just holding you back and you got to work through them and so those are, you know, you got to change the way you, you think. You got to change the way you speak to yourself, self-talk and to others, and then you'll change your outcome. All right. And so, you know, again, if your schedule's busy, talk to people who are busier than you and ask them how they're doing it. You know, so people come to me, Dusty, you got three gyms. I got one. How do you get it done? Plus gym reinforcements, right? Hey, uh, you know, I, I'm a mom of three. I'm going to go find a mom of five. You know, like I want to find somebody who's got more on their plate. How do you do it? All right. And that's how you're going to probably find the fastest answer you're looking for. Okay. But here's the thing. A lot of people ask that question, but they don't take action the next day. They say, okay, that was good. I took some notes. Awesome. And the next day they wake up and they repeat the same day they did the day before. They don't actually use it as a moment to say, wow, I am going to completely change the game for myself. I'm going to listen to what they did and I'm going to implement it. All right. And it's the same as when you're coaching a client on what to eat and how to train. They'll listen and they'll say, oh, that's interesting. And the next day they wake up and eat the same stuff. You can kind of get on them for the same thing. So don't be that same person. Change, okay? Improve, upgrade. Expense versus investment, all right? You know that a business needs marketing. Without marketing, it's not going to grow. So don't look at it as a bill and, and, and complain. Like Just like you knew a lease was an investment, right? If I invest into this space, I will turn it into an amazing business and it'll make me money and I'm going to help a lot of people. Why were you willing to invest in that 
but then you weren't willing to invest in marketing or hiring somebody to help you with follow up and sales. Like those are all just additional investments to help you to continue to grow your business. And honestly, what holds a lot of gym owners back from getting to the next stage is they just finally hit their level of risk tolerance and they stop investing and then the business stops growing. But why did it keep growing to the point where it is today? Because your risk tolerance and your willingness to invest was there and then eventually it hit a glass ceiling and then now so did the business, right? So I'm not saying you got to go into, you know, absurd amounts of debt and extend yourself, but really take the time to, you know, decide what is the right use of your finances that will have it, that has a true proven track record of growing a business, not just blindly throwing it at something and hoping it works out, right? So you find a coach that has experience and now that's a wise investment. You find a marketing team that has got a background of helping gym owners get leads. That's a wise investment. You got a, you know, follow up person with us with gym reinforcements. That's a wise investment. Maybe getting another set of barbells really isn't a wise investment because you can't really see how that's going to grow the business, but you just know that the, the other ones are getting a little rusty and like to get some new ones. Could you get along a little bit further another three months without getting them? Probably. But a lot of gym owners would be happy to invest in some ski ergs and barbells and a new rig and a sled, but then they wouldn't in marketing and sales. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Belief is what I think is the cause. Victim of circumstances. Okay. Clients won't pay this. Clients won't pay that. I bet there's a gym in your town charging what you charge, if not more, and getting it. All right. Don't get upset about it. Look at it as an opportunity to get better. Don't get bitter. Get better. All right. So ask yourself. How are they charging that? What are they bringing in terms of value to the marketplace that I'm not? And your market's not, you know, uh, awful. It's just that you haven't found out what people want. The answer is you probably got to tweak your offer. Whatever offer you're putting out, people just don't want. And so don't just keep throwing that out there and no one's buying. Change it. Find what people will buy and then let that run as long as possible until they stop buying. And then tweak it and change it and improve it. Ask people why, who didn't buy. Why didn't you buy? Was it the price? Was it what was included? What were you looking for? And get that market feedback because you don't need to be a victim of your circumstances. All right. So I hope this was helpful in terms of breaking beliefs. They, they happen all the time around you, your clients, your team and yourself. You are the belief breaking coach for your team and you need to assume that role and work on it so that you can get them to the next level, get yourself to the next level, because that's how growth happens, and that's how you're gonna break through to the next level and grow your business. All right, see you on the next video.